Greetings. Welcome to Worship with Madras United Methodist Church. I'm Pastor Gigi Siegeman. We are in our third week of our four-week series on the heart of Jesus. And today we'll be uh, looking at uh, the, uh, the sequel to last week's scripture. We'll still be in Luke chapter 6. And it's the command to love our enemies. So uh, we'll look at what it means to act as children of the Most High. So again, thanks for joining us for worship. As we begin worship, I invite you to join me in an attitude of prayer. And today's opening prayer is from the United Methodist Book of Worship, and it's a prayer from the Cory Mila community in Ireland. God, our mother and father, we come to you as children. Be with us as we learn to see one another with new eyes. Hear one another with new hearts and treat one another in a new way. Amen. But I say to you who are willing to hear, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who mistreat you. If someone slaps you on the cheek, offer the other one as well. If someone takes your coat, don't withhold your shirt either. Give to everyone who asks, and don't demand your things back from those who take them. Treat people in the same way that you want them to treat you. If you love those who love you, why should you be commended? Even sinners, those even sinners love those who love them. If you do good to those who do good to you, why should you be commended? Even sinners do that. If you lend to those for whom you expect repayment, why should you be commended? Even sinners lend to sinners expecting to be paid back in full. Instead, love your enemies, do good, and lend expecting nothing in return. If you do, you will have a great reward. You will be acting the way children of the Most High act, for he is kind to ungrateful and wicked people. Be compassionate, just as your Father is compassionate. Don't judge, and you won't be judged. Don't condemn, and you won't be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Give, and it will be given to you. A good portion, packed down, firmly shaken, and overflowing, will fall into your lap. The portion you give will determine the portion you receive in return. A certain member of my family, who shall remain nameless, used to enjoy the occasional trip to the ice cream parlor. And we're talking about the old-fashioned kind of ice cream parlor where you had a big um, uh, counter and employees were standing behind all the various uh, barrels of different flavors of ice cream. And my loved one would always take a moment to size up the people working uh, behind the counter to see who was giving out the biggest scoops of ice cream, who was really being generous with their servings. Uh, and it wasn't always the person with the, with the largest forearm muscles either. Uh, and, then, and then this person in my family would always make it a point to get in the line of that person who was in a generous mood. My family member was hoping, in the words of today's scripture, for a good portion, packed down and overflowing. And I love this image of abundance and generosity from the closing verses of today's scripture. And of course, it's not a reference to ice cream. It refers to a situation where an agricultural worker is being paid in grain and a generous employer would take a measuring scoop uh, of grain, pack it down, shake it, and then fill it again to overflowing before pouring it into probably the outstretched garment of the worker. Friends, we too can be recipients, at least metaphorically, of this good portion. But the route to this abundance is counterintuitive. Let's look at today's well-known scripture a bit closer. Now, it's packed with enough action verbs to make any writing teacher proud. And our congregation is comprised of 
action verb uh, kinds of people. So today's scripture should resonate with its command to do good, bless, pray, practice nonviolence, and give. And those are ju that's just getting started, right? Jesus uses these verbs and examples to define love as our actions. And the, the problem isn't, so, or the difficulty, I shouldn't say problem, the difficulty isn't so much with Jesus' definition of love. It's the recipients of this love that makes this passage radical by worldly standards. Love your enemies which we're told includes those who hate you, curse you, mistreat you, and take things from you. As children of the Most High, I love that passage, as children of the Most High, our doing good, blessing, praying, and giving are directed toward these least likely candidates. Who can possibly do this, right? At least that's the... That's what runs through my mind when I read the scripture. Uh, we don't do it on our own. And I think most of us know that. We, we can't will ourselves to live this way. But as children of the Most High, we draw on a strength that is not our own. God's compassion grounds us in compassion. Now, while the command to love our enemies and to practice forgiveness is simple in concept, it is anything but easy in practice. If someone cuts you off in traffic, for example, if you're feeling grounded in compassion, you can probably summon up a prayer for the offending driver rather than a curse or, or an obscene gesture. And similarly, when someone is rude to you, uh, you can probably, on a good day, respond by blessing them. But I think we all, uh, all reach our, our limits of how, how well we are able to live this command to love our enemies. Um, to use a real-life example, let's say someone steals the church lawnmower for yet the second time. Is the command to love one's enemies the first thing that pops into your head? I admit that I would likely be fairly judgmental and irritable at that point. And even this example is really more of an inconvenience, right? Uh, we know there are far ser more serious um, issues that we have to deal with when someone causes us emotional or physical harm uh, or causes that type of harm to a loved one. It can take long periods of determined prayer and the support of a loving faith community to reach a place of forgiveness. And we haven't even touched on our response to uh, widespread persecution or violence, though we can probably all think of examples where groups of people have responded to those very, have responded to, the, to, to persons who committed atrocities with love rather than vengeance. It's humbling to witness people who are serious about living this command to love our enemies, a command that speaks to the heart of Jesus. I do want to acknowledge, uh, and I think we're aware, that this command can be misused. Situations of intimate partner violence uh, are sadly an example where some church leaders have misapplied the, the command to forgive rather than assuring the safety of the victim. The command to love our enemies and to forgive doesn't mean that we don't set boundaries on behavior. But there is a big difference, a world of difference, between doing this from a stance of revenge or repaying violence with violence and doing it with a heart of compassion. Friends, we are going to spend uh, the upcoming Lenten season taking a deep dive into compassion, and we're going to unpack some of these ideas a little further at that time. But for today, I think, it's, I think we can suffice to say that this command to love our enemies is indeed a radical understanding of love. And to circle back where we started, I particularly like Luke's conclusion to this passage 
with its image of a good portion, packed down, firmly shaken, and overflowing. Sometimes we get a glimpse of this good portion, whether we witness others living out this command to love enemies, whether we receive that kind of love, um, and perhaps sometimes we even share that kind of love with others. But when we, when we do get that glimpse, when we do experience this good portion, this radical understanding of love, we know what it means to live as children of the Most High. Amen. Friends, thank you for worshiping with us today. I hope you'll join us next week for the conclusion of our uh, Heart of Jesus series. But let me uh, send you on your way with these words today. This also from our uh, United Methodist Book of Worship. Serve your God with patience and passion. Be deliberate in enacting your faith. Be steadfast in celebrating the Spirit's power and may peace be your way in the world. Thank you. See you next week.